Shut up and sit down. Oh yeah, brother! Welcome to episode 33 of the Third Shift. I'm your host, oh macho man, Rick. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Oh Hacksaw Man. Hello. How you doing, brother? <laughs> oh yeah, that's oh, how yeah. we open it. There it is. Let's do this. How's the week been, man? Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. I don't know anything else about what he really That's does. All. I mean, I could run around in a, in a square around the table and swing a plank mm-hmm. of wood, but that's... <laughs> I want to see you hit your bike with the 2 by 4 That's what you need to do. Just slam it. Bam. I feel like there Done. is a piece of wood somewhere in this apartment. I could totally do it, but I'm not going to do it right now. <laughs> yes. Do it. Oh, it'd be great. It would be kind of good. Well, I'll do that if you hop up on your bar over there and do a flying elbow drop onto your mic. <laughs> oh, I will. Trust in that, brother. <laughs> now, a side mm-hmm. story here. I recall a time when a man named Eric leg dropped a crib. It's very this true. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> that crib is still broken to this day. <laughs> so you have innate wrestler tendencies. See, that's what you should have been. You should have gone and trained to be a wrestler mm-hmm. instead of oh, pff, going off the Marine Corps and then oh, coming home geez. and working shitty dumb jobs and ended up in a, in a crappy hole where we are now. Hey, you know, nothing's better than a crappy <laughs> hole, man. Nothing. <laughs> you do seem to be at home in the poop and the holes and the pits. <laughs> I could take it. I was born to take That's it. That's just what we were talking about That's right we before we got on the air. <laughs> take the shotguns, Eric. Take the poop. Take the hole. That's right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's this has been a good week, uh, pretty much as far as, well, I mean, it's been an okay week, because I've been sick in real life, but then in video game world, I've just been eating up Yakuza Zero with both hands, man, just every second of every day, because, oh, I'm sick, I can't possibly, like, get up and brush my teeth and go to work, well, I mean, I do go to work, but you know what I'm saying, I can't possibly be responsible, I'll just sit here and play video games until it's time to go to work. <clears throat> Yakuza, <clears throat> Yakuza, oh, all day, every day. Oh, it's just so damn good. I love it. Other than that, just been a regular week, dude. What about you? Ho, <laughs> ho, ho. So, I want to give a quick shout out. We did our typical Saturday night mm-hmm. Borderlands adventure, drinking the beers, having a good time. It was coming to the end of the night. We were a little bit toasty. Mm, just a little bit. Matches were starting to go either really good or really bad. Mm. And then along came our savior, the Goblin the King. The Goblin King. So, Goblin King, if you listen to this podcast, you are the man or the woman, <laughs> because that name is fantastic. Well, it's the Goblin King, so it can't be a lady. Yes. It would be a Goblin Queen otherwise, right? That's true, but who knows? You know, these days, transgender, we don't know what's what. That's so true. I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just saying. And speaking of people with gendered names, I wanted to throw a, a screw you, not a shout out, to that married couple we played against who were also on a full five-man team and beat our Alani Pendles combo in face-off for the very first time ever, I think. That was our first ever actual face-off loss, rolling as a team. Yeah, that was. and It made me sad, It was like though. Captain Badobo and Mrs. Captain Badobo, and then they were rolling in a full five-man team other too and i was just like man screw you guys man i'm trying to drink beers and have some fun the goblin king isn't even here i don't even know what to do <sighs> <laughs> this was early on when we still we still thought we had it going you know Woo. uh-huh yeah that was too bad but it, it's all right the night ended very well the goblin oh, yeah. king helped carry us to victory it was fantastic <laughs> he, he descended from the heavens in a beam of light <laughs> He descended from the labyrinth, is what he descended so from. So he ascended from he the labyrinth. He came out of the closet. He came up out of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then maybe, you know, maybe while we were drinking, we said his name three times. You know, maybe I was like, Gobber King, Gobber King. I spun three times in front of the mirror Gobber when I ran King. to the bathroom. <laughs> Gobber King, Gobber King, Gobber King. <laughs> Come and take Matt and Eric very far. <laughs> <laughs> Help us actually win a meltdown handily. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Uh, you did it. Yeah. So that happened. It was a good time. Yes. I enjoyed it. Then the weekdays came and sadness ensued. You know, normal world of work and such. Mm-hmm. But 
as I've been talking about, I've got Horizon. And wow, just a good game. Solid as all get out. Mm-hmm. So like you with a Yakuza, you know, this week I've just been, what's that? You said I can get on the game and play some Horizon? Oh, well, don't mind if I do. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, the Nintendo Switch came in. And I went, oh, my little baby, my little handheld baby. Mm-hmm. So that I haven't got to touch much just because I only got Super Bomberman 4. And, uh, you know, that's kind of a game you play a few rounds of and stop for a bit because you can get very frustrated. Mm-hmm. It's a challenging game. Now, question for you. Since oh, what? I tasted Bomberman, have you yet tasted your Switch cartridges? No, I have not. I was actually going to wait and get an official licensed Nintendo oh, game, okay. Zelda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then try it. So I'll know within a week okay. whether or not these bitters are on there or people have lost their dang minds. All right, sounds good. But we'll find out. I will update you all next week. Mm. But other than that, lost power, you know, was out without power to, uh, for a day and actually didn't have power this morning. Mm. And so we were like running around, who's going to do the podcast? Oh, Danny's got to fill in for, for Eric. It's gonna, and she was over there sweating buckets uh, and shaking, and she just kept coming up with the excuses, excuses. She, she kept she kept texting us, maybe maybe we could do something else. Maybe I could put together a, 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 like a clip show, like a blooper reel. And I said, no, no, you're going to have to come on the show. And she went, oh, I'm sick. Oh, the baby's coming. Oh, I'm going to be in the hospital. Sorry, guys. Oh, Jesus. And then your power came back on, and she went, oh, okay, good, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, it's actually fine. I'm going to Sushimoto. That's Yeah, cool. thanks. See you guys in a bit. Uh-huh. Beautiful. I, I want to say it. Uh, I'm not going to say it. She's just going to cut it out anyway, or make me look right. like an asshole, so I'm not going to say it. hmm <laughs> So other than that, not too much. Pretty good week all in all. And here we are, rocking and rolling with the old podcast, mm-hmm. and we're going to scoop right on into what? We don't have Talented Tuesday. I was going to say, speaking oh, of the old the good old podcast, we got a good oh. new podcast, or a, an in the works kind of good new podcast, which That's dropped right. on Tuesday this week, The Imposter's Guide to Gaming. We've been working really hard on getting this one out to you guys. It took a lot of false steps and a lot of you know stumbling over getting what to go where and how to do correct, correct things, so I think we're finally actually on the ball with it, rolling with it. Uh, Next episode's going to drop next Tuesday. It's going to be, you know, one every two weeks. So keep an eye out for that. And if you haven't listened to it yet, please give us a listen and give us any comments or questions you got about that podcast. Heck yeah. We're pretty excited about it. We're hoping to, as usual, improve. And uh, just can't wait to dig into that one. And as we always keep saying, expand the brand. That's right. Expand the brand. So we did that this Tuesday. But keep a lookout next Tuesday for... Dun, 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 something special. Alani uh, Deep Dive. Oh, yeah. Yo, oh, yeah. Deep Dive coming back. Deep Dive, that, that Deep Dive's coming back, Matt. Coming on back because Sean demanded it. That's right. He demanded it like six weeks ago, so we're finally actually going to get on it and do it right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Sometimes I like having that monkey on my back for a long time. He talks to me, tells me things, sometimes feeds me a banana. You can't. I was going to say, when you got no power, at least you got monkey. So That's right. <laughs> oh, you feel it, Eric. You feel it. <laughs> hey, you want a banana, you failure? Oh, gee. <laughs> hey, I found some lice in your head. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> oh, eat those out. <laughs> I'm bald. How are you finding bugs in my hair? <laughs> So also this week, we've got shift codes for Golden Keys in Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel. So if you're not like us and forget to do them, I mean, you'll have a bunch of free loot just sitting around. Go nuts. So obviously, Gearbox, they just came off the Choctaw Battleborn uh, tournament that just took place. That's right. And they were like, well, you know, we're doing this. We got back. Oh, guess what? It's PAX East. We got to roll out. And I was surprised, man. Mm. It sounded like they were driving. Instead of flying, yeah, that's kind of what I took from you know the twitters uh, of you know several different members, mm-hmm. you know developers and other individuals that worked there. Mm-hmm. So basically, by driving, they needed those few extra days. And what happened? We, we got the battle plan on Wednesday. Oh, super nice! As you can imagine and should expect, it was light in the uh, way of information. See, what I thought you were going to say is, as you should imagine and should expect, we didn't actually take advantage of it, and I wrote down my stuff this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, Matt. That's just, that's just a standard. Although we were we were still up in limbo as to what the show was going to be like, if you were even able to or not. Yeah, so. very true. Yeah, I honestly 
even though I was being optimistic earlier, I didn't think I was going to actually be doing this podcast. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be on. So you know what happened was the battle plan was blown in on the winds of change that swept through Ooh. and destroyed mid-Michigan the other day. <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's how it got here so fast. Oh, from Texas, these, <laughs> these southern winds just... Boosh. I hate those winds. That was not cool, man. <laughs> Uh, not I cool mean, it didn't win. bother me any. I had I had internet yeah. and power and everything. Well, lucky you, <laughs> lucky you. So, speaking of the old Choctaw Festival, uh, the battle plan starts off with dun 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 dun. We were at the Choctaw Festival, had a great time, met a whole bunch of great fans, and guess what? Dunk Squad took the win, ten thousand dollars. Yeah. So. I watched a few matches, Matt. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you uh, got a chance to take a peek at any of them. I, I had been meaning to watch some, like on mm-hmm. Twitch at work, you know, mm-hmm. sneaky, sneaky Twitch like I normally do. But my phone is like on its last legs. Like it takes five seconds to open my messaging app. So watching anything on Twitch was not happening. And of course, Twitch is blocked on the work computers. So I went, well, yeah. I'll watch a YouTube recap of like the qualifiers from 4 weeks ago and then when you got home you were like you know what i'll go to the twit gearbox twitch channel and and rewatch some of that well, i already, I already but told then you yakuza i already told you said, what happens all, hey, all my free time exactly yes hey don't don't do that play me instead and that what happened. did that monkey jump on your back Matt? oh yeah did he make you do bad things he's like a 900 pounds gorilla dude he sits down here with me uh-huh. he feeds me pie and sandwiches and i go uh, I figured as much. Just whole I loaves figured. of bread and just handfuls of cheese. Yeah. So I'm not quite as guilty as you are. I did check out a few matches. I watched a little bit of it, and I was watching it live as it was going on. Mm. And I'll say when Varnell was in there doing some of the uh, the you know the casting, uh, what do they call that? The um, shout casting. Shout casting. Yeah. When he was doing some of the shout casting, it was a ton of fun. You know, as always, he's very energetic and. You know, even when there's like a dull moment or nothing's going really on, he'll just start interjecting with a little bit of this character and what they're doing and what they're up to and why they exist, Mm -hmm. you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And that's not to say the others didn't do a good job as well, Mm -hmm. but he definitely made sure it was, you know, just constantly something's being said and done the whole time. So that was pretty neat. Nice. I want to say that uh, Dunk Squad, when watching them do some of those matches, actually were showing me that Isaac is a force to be reckoned with. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, they were, for example, they were in Incursion, and on Monuments, they would have a Gaul come up, and he would just try to pick, you know, one out, and then they'd, boom, they'd tag team him, kill him real quick. Mm-hmm. And as they state in the uh, the interview and in the battle plan here, he was just trying to get one or two picked off and killed, and they'd push forward. Well, they were doing that, just as he said, except for they'd also have, like, an Isaac, once they pushed up to the sentry, mm-hmm. the first sentry specifically... And he'd get up on that ledge on the left-hand side, and he would just lay fire down on the sentry, like, nonstop, yeah. just wrecking it. And the the other teams, you know, they were scrambling to figure out how to stop them. So, you know, on one, on one occasion, they sent a Phoebe up whenever he was up there. Mm-hmm. But all he would do is he would hop down. The Phoebe obviously can't do anything up there, so she hops back down. Well, well he just hops right back up. Mm-hmm. Now he has a free reign again until Phoebe's cooldown's back up. You know the phase gate. Yeah. So they were doing that. They weren't. It. The other team wasn't able to counter that. And then, like I said, and like he stated, they were just going ahead and picking one or two off. You know, easy picks. Boom, bring them in, kill them, and then they just push forward, and it worked very, very, very effectively. Nice. And I was just like, wow. I mean, I, they didn't wreck everybody. There were some close matches, especially in a couple of the meltdown matches. Mm-hmm. But in incursion, the matches I saw them play. They were unstoppable. It was pretty sweet. Wow. That sounds pretty impressive. And then somebody was saying, you know, and I, it bugs me a little bit because, uh, where was it? They were saying that Galt's, you know, a difficult player to learn to play correctly. And and I said, yeah, he, he is. He is, but he isn't. Yeah. I mean, I, no character is so difficult you can't understand how to play. Right. But he is because learning to actually effectively use that hook mm-hmm. To where you're not missing with like 60, 70 percent of your shots, and then not only not missing, because that's not just the point, you know, to grab and pull them in. It's to grab them and pull them in when other members of your team oh, yeah. are there to assist you in killing them. Especially since that stun has been taken away, the slow time, you know, for certain characters really doesn't do much of anything. Mm-hmm. It's all about getting them in, and then other t- members of your team being able to coordinate 
and take down that character. Yeah. That requires obviously communication. That requires a little bit of, you know, preemptive thought as to when you're going to pull a character in. And then not only that, but you have to successfully pull said character. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy. So, you know, I hate it when I hear people go, oh, God, you know, just a, just a moron. Anybody can do that. I'm like, well, I don't know about all that, but sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I think he's an easy character to play, but to play effectively, you need the team around him, which we never have. I mean, you and I can try and do it as best we can, or do it never since you never play Galt anymore, but you know what I'm saying. No, I stopped playing Galt because it was that very, once the stun went away and I couldn't kill him myself and I needed, you know, someone to help most of the time, yeah. I was like, ah, that's not for me. Because even though me and you play together a ton, we're all, we're usually very busy trying to handle multiple things at once because, mm -hmm. you know, we don't roll with anybody else, so it's always a hit or miss with how good our team is. Mm -hmm. If we had the Goblin King on our team every time, that's true. Then sure, I'd play Galt again, no problem. <laughs> I was gonna say it's either that or we're two like not complimentary Inebriated. characters. Inebriated. Well, I mean, there's that, yes. <laughs> but like when you're Galt, I'm usually like Oscar Mike, so I, I pulled him in. Well, I'm already over here shooting down the lane, so I have to turn around try and shoot the grenade at him while he hops back over, and uh, we lost him. And then it's a mess. They're already gone. Yeah, whereas if it was like, oh, I'm bolder, and you pull him in, and then I can dash him and hit him backwards even more, then we could actually two-man kill a guy. No offense, but when you actually do manage to pull him, I'm like, ah, oh, he's not going to get it. I'm shooting over here. Oh, he got him? Oh, crap. Now none of my skills are off cooldown. Oh, jeez. Uh-huh. No faith, no confidence. I got it. You know. Well, I mean, you know, I can only get burned so many times, Eric. <sighs> oh, that's lame. Man, God, it hurts my soul. <laughs> see, that's why I don't play goal. I just, I can't take that abuse, man. I can't take it. Well, see, there, there we go. Next, next round we play. You'll be Galt. I'll be Boulder. We'll suck it up and be terrible, but you know, we'll at least try it. So, obviously, as I already stated, they went on to interview the leader of Dunk Squad, uh, Doctor Ho Ho. I saw somewhere in the comments where he is a twin with one of the other people on Dunk Squad. Yeah, I saw that. So, yeah, he's like the quote fingers leader, but there might be two leaders or there's one leader. I don't know. Well, as as the individual stated, you've got to give each of them equal props. Otherwise, the other one gets dominance over the other and then consumes him because that's what happens with twins. You know, they went ahead and did a little quick interview with him about how the experience was. He stated that it was a ton of fun. Uh, they were a little bit nervous, obviously, going up on stage like that. But once they sat down in front of the, the screens, it was just a blast. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine that because I'm the same way. You know, getting into something, you're like, ah, you get the jitters, and you're like, what the heck? Oh, yeah. And then once you actually roll, it's just pff, cake, butter, nothing to it. Especially when it's something you know as well as this, obviously. Because they, they've mm -hmm. been making, you know, guides and tier lists for PC. So it's not like they don't know the game. Once you're, okay, I'm just... I'm just playing another round of the game. I'll just shut everything else mm -hmm. out. And and speaking of guides and whatnot, they said that uh, after this tournament, not only do they want to compete in other tournaments that possibly come up for Battleborn, which we're all hoping do, mm -hmm. of course, but uh, that they want to do some guides to help people who are interested in forming a team and getting involved in said tournaments. So if you guys are interested, keep a lookout for Dunk Squad and what they might be coming up with next. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, lastly on that, congrats to them, of course. Oh, yes, of course. Right? Congratulations. I mean, geez. Yes. Congrats. Good job, guys. Super awesome. Mm -hmm. Glad you guys could make it. Sucks we couldn't make it, but, you know, maybe next time. Maybe it'll be in Detroit, man. Maybe somebody's going to come up to Detroit City. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then they'll get shot. <laughs> there will Although, be a real-life tournament outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wrath. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. I couldn't spin to win. Oh, goodness. No, nah, it's not that bad, boys and girls. I've been in Detroit a billion times. Oh, yeah. It's just hobos. They just ask you for change, and you, then you tell them no, and then they say you're an asshole. Mm. It's not that bad. It's easy. You just, you just go to the city, not to the like bombed-out post-apocalyptic ruins that surround <laughs> yeah. the actual city. <laughs> Which are pretty awesome to look at, by the way. Maybe at that point we'll actually have people to play with. Uh, you know, maybe we'll have friends who play the game again. It could happen, right? We've got one. We've got Sean for sure, well, and he's got a buddy he plays with. So that's and he's got yeah, he's got um, Moose Man, Caribou Lou, Caribou Lou. <laughs> there it is. There's shout out to Caribou Lou the Moose Man. He's, he's just Moose Man now. <laughs> Moose Man. 
I was thinking Mega Man. You know, so I'm like, what? <laughs> he's he's Moose Man. I mean, I don't even know if his name is actually Caribou Lou, but that's all you have ever said. You have ever called him. And the one time I played with him, I was just out of my mind drunk. So, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you, possible Moose Man, maybe Caribou Lou, <laughs> Caribou maybe you're like Elk Steve. I don't know. <laughs> Golden rule: never trusted Eric. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> oh my God. Oh goodness. So in the hot fixes, hey, guess what, everybody? There are zero hot fixes, and this, as we already said, was because it actually says in just, my notes, "Ain't shit here, bro." That's right. There are no hot fixes. Mm. They just went through the festival. They came back. They threw some papers down. They picked some new papers up, and they hit the road yep. to go to Pax East. Now I know some people in the comments were a little disappointed. You know, oh, it's two weeks in a row, nothing. I'm pretty sure, and I don't want to get people's hopes up because you know how that goes, mm. but I'm pretty sure PAX East is going to have some pretty cool stuff in it. So be patient. Give it a couple days. And they specifically said in the hot fixes section, hey, we're still thinking about how we want things to go and planning out this and that and the other thing. So I don't think it's going to be like no hot fixes ever again. I'm pretty sure once they come back and once they have a chance to actually look at all the footage from you know the tournament, see who people picked and how they worked in, you know, in combination and against all these other characters, there'll be all kinds of little tweaks and twicks and all kinds of little adjustments going. So I agree with that, but I also, I've got a little theory, which I'll explain a little bit later once we get into the lore. Okay. So, you know, a little suspicion once again, it'll be, it'll be a, it'll be a conjecture land hat, which we've already put on quite a few times in the past, Mm. but it needs bringing up a little bit, I think. It's like, it's like a fisherman hat. It's got That's like, right. lures and stuff and like little travel mm-hmm. buttons stuck in it. Yeah, it's just a, it's just something that makes people look at you. you know, we're not going to conjecture land. We're just gonna kind of mm-hmm. you know mess around a little bit. <laughs> we're gonna wear our I Heart Conjecture Land tourist shirts. That's what That's right. <laughs> That's what it is. Gosh. The community spotlight circles back to the Choctaw Festival because mm-hmm. one team, the Skulk Squad, which happens to be one of the teams I watched Dunk Squad go up against, and they did pretty good in the meltdown, but they did get uh, they did get beat pretty readily in the incursion map. Mm-hmm. But once again, hey, they did a great job and probably would have beat the snot out of me or you. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. You know, definitely good job out there, way to represent. But beyond that, two members of their team wore, and this was... Natsumi Ryu and Nico. I know I know we've definitely heard from or seen Natsume Ryu in the battle plans before. I can't remember if it was a forum thing or if it was more cosplay or some kind of art, but the name definitely sparked me and then the Calderius costume also made me jump out of my chair and go, Whoa, holy crap, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. They uh they did a Calderius and a Wrath suit respectively mm-hmm. and both of them are really good, but I was super impressed with the way the Caldarius's head worked. Mm. How he had the uh, the top, the head on, uh, obviously on the top, and then he had the the black little, you know, oh, yeah, shadow yeah. mask going up to it. Mm-hmm. So obviously he's looking out through that. But when you look at him as a whole, it just looks like Caldarius. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So props to those guys because that was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Apparently they also concocted a, a a bottle of go-go juice as well. I wasn't sure mm-hmm. what. Looks like Mountain Dew. Well, I mean, yeah, but, you know. live That live wire Mountain Dew, and then you take off the Mountain Dew label, and you put on an imprinted go-go juice symbol, and bada-bing, bada-boom, man, you're rolling. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's true. I know it's true. That's what happened. I mean, I'd put a little extra go-go in that juice, but yeah, it's just me. Oh, yeah, well, a little, little Bim Jean. Probably couldn't bring that into the casino and be passing that around on the show floor, though. You know it's better than, than go-go juice, Matt? A little Bim Jean, that go-go juice. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, really compete well then we'll be at uh, top of our game mm, yeah well just just enough yeah it would actually do it mm-hmm. you're right see so, battle board just doesn't feel right <laughs> in between the rounds <laughs> just need a couple of there, oh, we, there we, we go, go. Now it's on. Now it's Pendles and Lonnie going to town. So good job, guys. Mm-hmm. Those costumes were fantastic, and you definitely deserve some props for it. Oh, yeah. Not only the props for making those costumes, but you actually competed while wearing those costumes. That, that's that pretty That couldn't nuts. have been that easy. I got to imagine they were hot, sweating. Whew. Well, how could you wear the Caldarius costume while playing? Because that was huge. I don't know. They did it. 
They were wearing their costumes while playing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> they were up there in costume. If I remember right, the wrath, you know, he had it. There was nothing on his face at the time. So, I mean, it was mm. him looking at the screen and everything. But yeah. still, the with the gauntlets and whatnot. Okay. And yeah. kind of seemed like it getting away, but I guess not. He was just using the controller. So, mm. you, once you get comfortable and it tucked in, it wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And then next up, we got a an enormous lore segment. This one was really in depth and complex, and I I kind of liked the, you know, the more actual just hey look here's a little story we wrote for you guys. As much as I love the oh here's a diary entry or a log book or this or that, this was actually like you know a little short story they did. A uh, bunch of different characters in this one. A guy named Gustav meeting up with Reina. I love the little. Kind of like backstory of Captain Dredge. Captain Dredge sounded freaking awesome. Yeah, he was sounding pretty badass. Uh, I, I was really hoping it would be, oh, yeah, he's getting shipped off to go hang out with Captain Dredge, and then maybe Captain Dredge could be playable in some kind of fashion or have a story app where it, like his minions are running around and you got to do stuff. Oh, that that was so cool. My, my energy just went, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me bring it back up, okay? Uh-huh. All right, listen. So... I just want to stay with the lore that just came out, introducing several new characters and a little bit of backstory with that Captain Dredge, mm-hmm. obviously Gustav, and uh, then Shane and Oryx uh, being the captain that she is now, yep. and then Orendi being a tag team with Shane and Oryx, crazy, which is awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. You know, they always tend to kind of foreshadow the next thing That's in the true. lore. So this just happened. If you look up into their hot fixes, they stated, hey, we wanted another week to kind of start having more discussions about where we're going, what we're doing from here. And then, of course, as we talked about last week, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, close your ears for five seconds if you don't want to hear the spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Relating to the Phoebe in the Heart of Echinar story app. You can't just leave it. There you go. <laughs> you oh, come on. Okay, I guess. Jeez. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it could be literally anything about the game. <laughs> hey oh, spoilers. Hey, hey, just, don't listen or listen. The ending to the Phoebe in the Heart of Echinar, mm. obviously, I mean, the most current op. Spoiler, here we go. Here we go. Rendane coming back. Mm-hmm. Holy moly. So you take those three things and just some other stuff, you know, we've talked about before and, and what you can expect. And obviously, Mental Mars had a video or a blog, a whole thing about how... Uh, Varnell accidentally stated a season one specifically. Oh, dear. And obviously, if you weren't season two, why would you ever say season one? You know, mm. all these things together just enforce what we talked about last week, if you listened in, and yeah. that that this PAX East, I think we're going to hear season two. And then not only are we going to get season two, just as in it's being announced, but we're going to get, and here's new characters. Captain Dredge, here's a new character. Da 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 da. Here's a new ops mission. Shane and Oryx going with the Rendy to freaking whatever Spaceville land. Da 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 da. <laughs> I hope that's the actual <laughs> title. <laughs> going to freaking whatever Spaceville going land. What, hey, that'd be a perfect title for Shane and Oryx. I was going to say that's exactly how they would put it in the logbook. <laughs> that's pretty good. So I just think with these, all these little things coming together. Mm-hmm. And PAX East, obviously, you know, this weekend, I feel like we might get something. And I, I don't want people to get excited. I don't, you know, like I said, it's right, conjecture right. land. Don't don't get all hyped. And then, you know, all of a sudden there's not too much beyond, you know, what you can obviously expect, which you're going to mm-hmm. get a ton of Bulletstorm stuff because that's what they've been announcing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I know everybody that listens is super excited about Battleborn. So I don't want to get everybody's hopes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely thought with how in depth they went on this lore, the you know the supersized length of it, and all the different bits of technology and details about, especially how Gustav got all his stuff. Like you wouldn't just do that for some side character that you just kind of imagined and went, oh, here's some person who's going to work with Reyna. No, that'd be a character you were actually working on, or you know, for whether it's for a story op or an, being an actual character or whatever. So I I definitely think that points in the direction of, you know, season two characters and adventures. But like you, I don't really want to get my hopes up that much, but I'm going to anyway. And then I'm going to be sad. But then I'm going to be happy when it eventually does come, maybe. And then he also made really several times that he made mention of the command gauntlet of Reyna's. 
yeah. in the lore segment, which leads me to believe that something's going to happen or one of these rogues is planning to steal it, take it, I don't know, something. It just seemed odd that it was brought up several times during this lore segment. Mm-hmm. You know, the way it made everybody feel and then the, the confirmation that she still has it. You know, I was like, why why are they bringing this into focus? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. So... I just think it was pretty neat. Something to look at, something to think about, something maybe to get a little, you know, excited about. There might be something to it. Yeah, maybe so. We'll see. We'll come back next week completely wrong, and then we'll say, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, you know. As as we have many times uh-huh. in the past, yes. Exactly. Yeah, well, what, what do you do? you got to have fun, right? That's right. So speaking of next week and the PAX East, the whole thing, in the coming up segment, they basically said, hey, we're going to be at PAX East. We knew that through, you know, Friday through Sunday. And as we stated before, the Inside Gearbox panel will be Sunday the 12th at 1030 a.m. Eastern Time, and it will be streamed on twitch.tv slash gearbox software, and they'll be tweeting out details from their Twitter account as well. Now, another cool thing they're going to be doing at PAX East that they've been tweeting about quite a bit is the Bulletstorm Skill Shot Showdown. Whoa, man, say that three times fast. Mm, no, thank you. <laughs> I was lucky I got it on the first try. But this is going to be a competition in Bulletstorm, obviously, where you can win a share of another $10,000 in prizes. Apparently, you play through one of the Echo Maps twice, and your highest score gets recorded. And then out of everybody who does this, basically the highest score wins. The first place gets five thousand dollars, second gets three and a half thousand, and third gets fifteen hundred bucks. So if you're there and you can sign up for this or get in there and do that, uh why not do it? Because you could possibly win like crap tons of money. Why you won it is beyond me. Yeah. Spend a little bit of time playing a video game in which you shoot people and have a good time and then mm-hmm. have a chance at winning lots of money. Yeah. Yeah yes please. Yeah, yes please. We really should have just peeled out over there and found a scalper with some tickets or beat up some nerds and just took their took their tickets and got in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, hey, it's third that's how shift. We do it. <laughs> How'd you guys get these tickets? I thought they were sold out. Never mind. What's that on your knuckles? Uh, don't worry about it. I just fell down outside. That's Yep, just had just had an accident. It's all right. Make a great first impression. Uh-huh. Hey, nice to meet you guys. Whoop whoop whoop. Why are, why are the cops here? <laughs> Let me play real jail. quick. Let me play. <laughs> Now I, I do I do regret the fact that uh, when I actually was like you know what the hell with it and tried mm. to get some tickets they were sold out and from what I hear they're sold out quite quite some time before even when I looked and that was months three months or so before the event so yeah that was that was a few months ago so. yeah I didn't I honestly didn't expect that and I don't know why I didn't expect that but that's too bad I was gonna say it's the, it's the big number two one and it, well everybody from New York and that whole area was gonna go to that one so it's kind of that's true. Just yeah. like with PAX West, and you got the entire freaking state of California and everybody else mm. going. So those two become almost impossible to get tickets to. Yeah. And PAX South is, as we said, too far. Dang it. So, yes, we are sad and jealous that we cannot come to PAX East, but I will sit at home in my comfy chair, and I'll watch it from 1030 till whatever time it ends on mm. March 12th. You can be sure of that. And I, you know what? Maybe we'll get another song from Randy Pitchford. Who knows? It could happen. I will definitely be sitting here watching it and then looking on Twitter and seeing, oh, somebody just won $5,000 in Bulletstorm, and then I'll throw my phone across the room, and it'll break, hopefully, and then I'll be like, yay, now I get a new phone. Because my, my one's crappy. See, I'm, I'm tying it all together. I That's went terrible, man. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I've also been seeing the, uh, you know, the devs that are there tweeting out their giant huge bags of like bullet storm swag that they're going to have at the gearbox booth which is booth 12055 in case you're going there and you're totally lost and you can't read a map that's the booth you need to go to but yeah they were like hey maybe you guys should stop by the bullet storm area bags upon bags upon bags of swags oh so nice so lucky i want a swag bag man give me a swag bag some bullet storm action going on oh mm-hmm. god bless well that's all right. We'll 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 see what the old show has to give us anyway, and of course right. we'll be having our own copies of Bulletstorm in the future. So mm. even though we can't attend, we will get all the good things eventually. At some point, yes. Speaking of future and what's coming up, man, I thought we'd uh, chit chat just a minute. You know, the Nintendo Switch came out. 
which, yeah. as I told you, I got. And, you know, I'm super impressed so far, especially with the handheld portion of it. I mean, as a console, mm. you know, this isn't uh, this isn't a podcast about any of that. But I will say, as a console, it's not going to compete with PS4 or Xbox One. Right. But you're going to get your exclusive Nintendo titles. Where it shines is in the handheld area. You know, it's bigger than the 3DS. It's not as as handheldy as like you generally like. But yeah. if you're careful with it, get the proper casing. This thing can go pretty much anywhere with you. It's not that big. You've seen it. I've showed it to you. I was going to say, it definitely felt more like extended tablet-y than pure handheld, but I mean, it felt pretty good. I, I liked the size of the screen. Like you said, I couldn't see myself getting a ton of eye strain like I sometimes do with the 3DS. I mean, I have a 3DS XL, and it's still, you know, after an hour or two, I'm just like, whoa, jeez. Mm-hmm. And the Joy-Cons offer all sorts of, you know, different functionality from the, uh, what do they call it, 3D rumble, I think, or HD rumble. I can't remember which phrase they're going with. But it's a basically a super high-end rumble where it can actually operate in such a manner that, for example, if you put a ball, there's a game on a 1-2 Switch game where you can actually put a little box, you know, Joy-Con in your hand, and it says, hey, how many balls are inside this box? And then you move it around, and it, it actually can do rumbles in different ways so that you can feel different balls moving around in your hands. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, stuff like that. <laughs> it's got that. I saw that smile, and that's, yeah, not, that's shush, not good. Duh. It's got that, and then it's also got, uh, it's got like a little camera functionality on the bottom of it that allows it to sense what you're doing and know if, you like, say you're moving your hands or opening and closing your mouth, it can tell what you're doing, and then hmm. it can take those commands and put it into the game. So, like, okay. there's a sandwich eating contest. So if you're over there chomping your mouth open and closed, it goes, hey, he opened and closed his mouth. Boom. Gives you a bite. Okay. So what I'm getting at is there's a ton of functionality in the controllers. The uh-huh. new Switch has the possibility to be a console game with decent graphics, not, you know, incredible, you know, high-end Horizon Uncharted 4 graphics. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, it functions amazing so far as a handheld and offers graphics way above and beyond what any of the current handhelds are able to offer. Okay. What I want to know is where's Gearbox in all this? Is Gearbox going to jump on board? Should they jump on board? Mm -hmm. If they do, what do we think they're going to do and why should they do that? I think with any new hardware system, it's wise to actually jump on board it in some capacity, whether it's, you know, trying to release a AAA title on it or not. That that's you know the only iffy part I would say, but I mean there's a whole segment of users over there and available, and if you can somehow you know throw a line and hook them in a little bit, then you know maybe they'd oh I really like this game from this developer. What else have they been doing? Oh, what are these games over on PS4 or Xbox One or all this? You know maybe kind of cross promote yourself. Plus, you know it's it's just more money you can get. So I definitely think. Yes, they should. I mean, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to develop for a console. Well, the reason reason behind that is because Nintendo has notoriously had almost zero yeah. third-party support for a couple consoles now. Mm-hmm. Now, another reason I brought this whole thing up is because in the Wii days, Gearbox did support Nintendo with Samba de Amigo. It was published by Sega, but it was developed by Gearbox. Oh, really? So what has me excited is the fact that they actually supported a Nintendo home console, yeah. which, you know, like I said, a lot of third parties did not do. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that they come back, and I don't think they developed anything for the Wii U. Not as far as I'm aware. I'm not certain on that, but I don't think they did. And, you know, honestly, who can blame them? That system kind of just never got its uh, feet off the ground, I guess would be the best way to put it. It didn't seem to carry the momentum of the Wii. It was a confusing launch. Anyways, another subject, another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have, in the past, experimented with, like, you know, different control schemes, being inventive and having fun and doing something of that nature. Mm. I am hoping that they do indeed support the Switch. And I know Randy Pitchford's come out and said he's contacted Nintendo about making a game for the Switch. But at Mm. the time, they were busy and not invested in talking with... uh, you know, anybody that they were already talking to because right. they were focused on making this launch successful and putting out a very particular image so that they could get as many people as they wanted on board. 
But that's not to say, like, some people blew it out of proportion, and Randy Pitchford cleared it up several times, stating that that's not to say that Nintendo was blowing them off. That's not to say that Randy doesn't respect and love the Nintendo, because he does. That was just saying, at the time, there's nothing going on. But I think the the near future, you know, there could be all sorts of possibilities, and I think Nintendo's going to most assuredly be open to any third-party support wanting to come over and put out a quality game, which we know Gearbox can do. And beyond... Beyond what I'm already about to say, I'd love some Borderlands ports. I mean, oh, yeah. oh, who would not want to be sitting at work on their lunchtime playing the Handsome Collection? Huh? Or, for that matter, if if the Switch can support it, Battleborn, I'm not sure if it can. I don't... I, it would be iffy because there's a I, ton of I feel of like effects. that would be iffy. Yeah. But I know it could do, obviously, Borderlands 2 Handsome Collection. I don't think that would be an issue at all. I, th- I think only... As far as size would be the issue. Well, no. If if you saw Zelda Breath of the Wild, size is not an issue. Well, I don't mean, let I, your women, don't let the woman folk tell you otherwise, boys. <laughs> I, I haven't seen the games. I don't have the system, so it it just goes from from my mind, like we were talking about off off air with Persona. How do you take a Blu-ray disc and put it into an SD card? Mm-hmm. I mean, in theory, you can do it, but I. Haven't seen that like super triple A amazing like PS4 graphics that you can fit on the thing. In well, this. next week you'll see. Well, you got to remember Borderlands was PS3, so yeah, that's true. Most assuredly, I, I it, it's got the power to fit a bar, uh, a PS3 game on it. Well, see, and see, that's what I was thinking when you were talking about Borderlands ports. I was thinking maybe here's here's an idea that just sparked off in my brain earlier today when we were talking about this. What about if you did the Borderlands 1 remaster or, you know, slight upgrade port to the Switch. That way you can, oh, I've been playing Nintendo consoles my whole life. What's this game? Oh, that's really cool. And then you play through it. Oh, you know, I want to continue this adventure. Oh, there's a 2 and then like another. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. There's a 2 and then there's a pre-sequel and then, you know, like I said, that would be that'd be the hook to get mm-hmm. people in. And plus it would be, you know, it'd be like a cross hook because... They would hook Switch users to coming over and buying more of their games on other consoles, and they would also hook people for Nintendo into getting the Switch, because everyone asks, where's the Borderlands 1 remaster? Well, it's over there. So I, th- I think it would be a, a, a smart thing. You'd, you'd loop in Nintendo people, and you'd help Nintendo by doing that. Well, I agree with you. In a business sense, they would probably still multi-platform you know, platform that sucker. Oh, because yeah, I'm sure. obviously... The bigger platforms on PS4, Xbox One, but I get what you're saying. That would be cool. I do think they should do that. I mean, that's a good idea. Do the remaster and include Switch in it, so yeah, that way yeah. players from the because Nintendo fan folk, there's a lot of them out there. You know, they're loyal to the Nintendo and Nintendo products. Mm-hmm. So if generally speaking, a lot of them have just that system, and they're rocking it and they love it. So they haven't had the enjoyment of Borderlands back when it first came out. They don't have Borderlands 2 and all the others. So if you were to bring Borderlands 1 Remastered over to them, this would be a lot of their first times ever playing this game. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, if they loved it, oh, man, I want more of this. Well, guess what? We're also porting Borderlands Handsome Collection over, and that's got two, the pre-sequel on it, and all all the fancy graphics upgrade a little bit and redone. Mm -hmm. Bam. Money, money, money. And then, of course, who who did this? Oh, Gearbox. Oh, great. What else did they do? Brothers in Arms, Duke Nukem, Homeworld, you know, da 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 so on and so forth. I was going to say, and plus, if you're getting into that kind of game, Borderlands is, you know, it's a serious, it's a serious gaming franchise. So if you're getting into that and you start getting hooked on that, well, now you're going to spread out and you're going to go find a PS4 maybe used and pick up some other games for that and just mm-hmm. grow yourself as a gamer. And it's good for Gearbox, and it's good for, obviously, everybody else involved. It's good for everybody, literally. But beyond the ports, more more importantly, they updated an existing IP into a very fun, you know, shake it genre, you know, cool little rhythm game. And big mad props to them for doing that, using the Wii's new motion controls, when at the time, apparently nobody else wanted to do that. I mean, which boggles my mind, because that was the big gimmick for the Wii. Mm-hmm. Is you know motion controls. Why would you not want to make a game where you're, you're utilizing that to do all sorts of cool things? I mean, 
they went on there with rock band and everybody else to be something really cool and all the other crap but in a nutshell i want a new ip something original something cool something utilizing what nintendo switch can do mm -hmm. and i was thinking about it for the last day and i'm like well you know they've got they've got borderlands which is your first person shoot 'em up kind of looter shooter as they call it you got Battleborn, your your MOBA esque game going on, Homeworld. They've got Duke Nukem. You know, they've got all these things. What what new? What's something new that they could get into and make a great fun game? And I was like, well, I don't know. I and I'm probably tainted because I've been playing Horizon and I've got Zelda coming up for me. So I'm like. What shouldn't they hop in to like a make a game that's take Conkers for example? Con Conkers Bad Fur Day. Okay. You know, a Banjo Kazooie, you know, Mario kind of spin-off game, but super raunchy and adulty. Well, we know Gearbox is awesome at making crazy jokes and doing all sorts of fun uh, wacky crap. Okay. So, let's back it off. We don't go raunchy, we don't go, you know, real all overtly sexual and crazy, but we make a cool brand new adventure game utilizing the joy cons in such a fashion that you know you could whatever i i don't get paid to make up this kind of crap but utilizing the joy cons and utilizing the switches on the go capabilities to make a cool new adventure game that's for adults that's got great humor great characters you know nothing nothing crazy out of the box but just that Gearbox spin, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Mm. Gearbox spin and some kind of adventure platform. I think yeah, that's not bad. I don't have they done any sort of adventure platform type game. I don't think so. I think it's mostly been you know shooter type games. Mm -hmm. Imagine like a Shadow Run made by Gearbox. Mm. You know something like that. That's kind of where I'm going for. Or maybe okay. a or you know or if you want to go a little bit loose, you know maybe like a Metroidvania type game. Mm -hmm. By Gearbox, I don't know something in some in that world. I think would be amazing for them. Yeah, I could see that. I I could see their their writing team going, you know, totally nuts on some whole new IP, some new franchise. But kicking back for me, what I, I don't know if you saw it, but when you were talking about their existing franchise, my my eyes lit up. Uh huh. Like a light I saw. Bulb. Oh, I did. When you said they've got Battleborn, which is kind of their MOBA, well, you could take. I mean, not the existing assets or anything, but you could kind of strip down Battleborn a little bit, make it a top-down MOBA-style game, you know, more action-based like Smite, you know, kind of rework the graphics and stuff, make it a little... tweak the graphics so it looks a little bit more like, you know, like your League of Legends or something, and have that be like your light MOBA on the Switch, on the go. And, you know, you could have a, a story mode where you're learning how to MOBA battle and all this stuff, or even just have like a little kind of adventure style, like third person camera Battleborn, like the story modes. Now that's pretty awesome. Expand the brand for that's Battleborn. Right. Boom. And, and if it was like a stripped down downloadable one, you could be like, hey, if you like Battleborn, go check out the full version on PC and all these other consoles. Mm -hmm. Or it could just be, you know, this is Battleborn for the Switch. It's different and it's a little, I keep wanting to say stripped down. Because I feel like that's what you don't it has have to, be. to strip it down though, because you just turn it to what it is at its at, at its core, a MOBA. Yeah. And the Switch can power any of the MOBAs out currently, no problem. MOBAs don't require that much power at all. So you could yeah. you, you could keep everything in place. Sentries would be there in the middle, you know, or you could make them the final cap, you know, obviously, and once you mm -hmm. get through the towers and such, all you'd have to do is just. Add in a few little things here and there. Get the over top down version going of it. Mm -hmm. Same characters you can pick with same different abilities. I mean, I don't know. It wouldn't be simple, but that yeah, would definitely yeah. not be out of the realm of doable. And it'd be keeping in the name of the Battleborn brand. Mm -hmm. So like you said, hey, this is fun. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I want to dig my teeth into some more of this. Oh, look. On the PS4 and Xbox One and PC, they've got Battleborn, you know, the... Ultimate Collection or whatever. Yeah. They've got the ultimate Battleborn collection with all the cool, you know, this way, first-person player experience, blah, 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 blah. 
I was going to say, how, how about that? They just have the MOBA part, the multiplayer part, or the, you know, versus bots part on the Switch. And then if you want the story, you know, all the story modes and the story ops and stuff, that's when you go for the full game on, quote, fingers, bigger consoles. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of top-down stuff, like a MOBA is, just talking right now totally sparked me, as it usually does, you could totally do a Brothers in Arms, like, top-down mm -hmm. style game. That Instead would be of just awesome. having it be first or third person, actually, you know, it'd be kind of almost Advance Wars style, not like 8-bit graphics or anything, yeah. but like actually strategically moving your guys on the map, seeing cones of fire and, you know, zones of engagement. I think that would be... I mean, that would be really sweet. I would sit there at work and play that all the time. I would get fired if they made that. So don't make it, but also make it. No, just make it. It's fine. It'll all work out. <laughs> but yeah, those, I mean, that's a great idea. I mean, between that, the Borderland, a new IP of some kind, uh, I'm just hoping, I really do hope that they get on board and that Randy keeps badgering Nintendo. Yeah, think for me, another thing that I've, just, just vague, you know, this isn't specifically to, to any game or anything. I've been talking for, you know, months and months now that I wish they would do smaller games, like smaller downloadable games. You could put a bunch of, you, know, you could throw anything on the eShop up there for the Nintendo Switch, just make smaller downloadable games that, you know, if it's Duke Nukem Throwback Adventure. Mm -hmm. Go back to a 2D cool old school Duke Nukem, you know. Mm. That'd be a fun little one. Yeah, I mean, just little stuff like that that wouldn't, you know, you don't have to get, you know, super triple-A with the Switch. If Even if you're just there for little things, then it's another... I was going to say, they're going to have their eShop up and running, you know, on high, high gear one of these days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've already got these, what they call Nintendies, which are basically just indie games coming, tons of them. Mm -hmm. Gearbox could totally get in shallow in the shallow water by making a couple of those. Oh, yeah, just another little revenue stream, and then get your name out there with those people who haven't heard you, like we've been saying this whole time. Mm -hmm. Just another, another light investment versus, we're going heavy on the Switch, when you don't really have to. You can just, all right, side team, hey, Gearbox Quebec, why don't you start working on a little side project for them? Split off, you know, a couple people from this other team and work on this and this and that. Little, little things. I, you know, like like I've said before, even in between their AAA releases that I've got on, you know, my PS4, I would like to see more little things to keep supporting them, you know, mm -hmm. keep cash flow going into them. I agree. I mean, here's the hope, and who knows, maybe it'll be a big shocker at PAX East about something with the Nintendo Switch. I highly doubt it. I was gonna say that would be nice, but I don't. I don't think yeah, that's. I don't at expect all. it's gonna happen at all. But who knows? You know. But something to think about. You know, if anybody over there at Gearbox is listening, come on, get on board. That way, I can play you guys at work. Come on, make my life better. <laughs> See, you could be playing and taking notes with your other hand. Oh, jeez, <laughs> wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, I totally forgot to go check this thing. I was supposed to look. Boom! Pull out the handheld. Mm -hmm. Done. Don't care. And boss starts yelling, what are you doing over there, Eric? Shut up. I got work to do. How many times have we had an idea for the show or an idea about the game at work? And we go, oh, man, next time we're on, we should check the blah, 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 blah. And then both of us totally forget, even if it's just that night. So now I'd be like, hey, we should totally check that. Yeah, I'm going to take my 15-minute break that I'm not allowed to take, but I, whatever. I go to the desk and then quick, do 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 or if it's just a stat thing. I wonder if he gets HP regen with this. Oh, pull it out. Boop, 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 boop. Yep, he does. Power off. Throw it back in the drawer. Walk away. Oh, it'd be amazing. God, it'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, someday it may happen, Matt. It could happen. It may happen. It could it's happen. 2017, the year of hope and dreams and magic. Yeah. So anyways, let's switch off of that subject. <laughs> yes. No. I knew it was happening. <laughs> I knew it was coming, happen. and I still hate you for it. <laughs> Oh, to wrap it up, Matt. I think we've got a show for the day. It's time to go yep. play some games and go to bed. Oh, but first, we got to do, you know, our due diligence and What? Hey. Do we have a piece of mail today, Mr. Matt? This postcard is awfully like old and dirty. It's like it's wow. all like moldy and Ancient? ripped. And oh, I think Jesus. this has been sitting in the bottom of Steve's bag for like like months upon months. Must have been lost. It's all right. Got, mis got misdirected. Mm -hmm. So this question comes to us from Player X. Back in December, Player X sent us this <laughs> oh question. God. December 10th. Ancient bastard. times. 
Although, once you hear the question, you'll know why we sat on it for so long, because we still don't really have an answer for this. But, Player X asks, When will I be able to play Borderlands 1 on the PS4? I just made a shrugging motion that you can't see. I just pounded my table and probably made a huge loud noise in the mic that Danny's going to yell at me about. Bam! Awesome. Good job. Now, to answer the question officially, Player X, probably never. Because I've heard so many conflicting things on this, I don't believe anything anymore. I've heard that it was for sure stated that it's going to happen. I've heard that it's never going to happen. I've mm-hmm. heard that who knows what's happening. Gearbox, I, to the best of my knowledge, has not stated anything concrete about it whatsoever. Yeah, I feel like I heard that it was going to happen ages upon ages ago. And then people started saying, well, it's probably never going to happen because Borderlands went backwards compatible on the Xbox One, so why would they remaster it if you can just play it anyway? And then the last you know, few Google searches I did of it, all I came up with was angry people on YouTube going, where's my Borderlands remaster, man? I want to play that Borderlands. Why would you do anything with Battleboard? Yeah, that sounds about accurate. Yep. Uh-huh. And, and that's that was literally all I found. So we don't know, Player X. I doubt you'll be able to at any point because I would think we would have heard about it even if it was just, hey, it's re-released as a downloadable game. I think we would have heard plans about that by now. Mm-hmm. So for the foreseeable future, I would say not going to happen. Yeah, but I also know that he got it on Steam anyway, so he probably doesn't care anymore. That's true. <laughs> But if you happen to actually listen to the podcast again, Player X, there's your, there's your damn answer. We don't know, and it doesn't matter because you're playing it on Steam regardless. So you're happy as a little clam <laughs> in the water. Not on my plate. Getting sucked out. Just like that. Not fried up in a bucket. Ooh, yeah. So good. Steamy clams in a bucket. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, man. Now I want one of those like big seafood bakes. Like the only oh, good thing there yes. is at Red Lobster when they have mm-hmm. that seafood bake thing. I love oh, that thing. Boy. Yeah, bless. So, yeah. Well, Player X, we hope to hear from you soon again. And I actually hope to hear from all of our fans again. Because really? Because as you, as you saw by the moldiness and dustiness of that, that mailbag question, I don't have anything anymore. So fill up the mailbag, guys. And if you want to do that... You can email us at info at thirdshift.me. You can tweet your questions at us at thirdshiftme, or you can send them to us on Facebook when you find us under Third Shift. Yeah, and let me tell you this. If we don't get some questions, I'm going to make up some questions, and you guys don't want me to make up questions. I'm Trust gonna, me. I'm, gonna, I'm texting Danny right now to Matt's say, already if shaking Eric his says head. anything about mailbag, <laughs> if Eric does a mailbag ever, do not, I mean, cut it Dude, from the show. Do not air that show. garbage. Never lie. It won't be good. So we need you guys to use those incredible brains of yours to send us in all sorts of cool questions about anything Gearbox related, and we will attempt to do homework and answer those questions to the best of our ability, which isn't very good, but it's okay. I promise they won't sit for like three months like mm-hmm. Player X's did, unless there's literally no info on it, and we can't find anything That's on the right. internet. Yeah, huh? And so, <laughs> also out there in the world, we have a Patreon, and yes. we've had... Awesome support over there. We love everybody that's went ahead and donated anything that they could to us at any point given, and now, past, present, and in the future. It's greatly appreciated. It helps us, you know, have the motivation to keep going. I mean, it lets us know we're appreciated. And you know what else? Questions and such also let us know how much we're appreciated. So, hey, you don't got a dollar? You don't got a hundred dollars? You could also just send in a question. Or. <laughs> Or there's a third alternative. You could maybe give us a review, Matt. Yeah, give us a rating or a review on any one of the following platforms where you can find the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podomatic. We upload to YouTube and Google Play Music as well. This podcast drops every Friday, so we'll see you guys again on the 17th of March for our very next episode with all kinds of news and speculation from PAX East and what the Inside Gearbox software panel brings to us. So keep an eye out for that. Oh, I'm looking forward to next week, man. PAX East. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be a good episode full of all sorts of tidbits. 
I'm going to be a little sad because my show notes are going to run into like two pages, mm-hmm. I'm sure, especially if they come back with hot fixes for Battleborn. So beware, Danny. It might be like a three-hour episode. Yeah, we might be sitting here until like 11.30 p.m. just going and going and going, and I'm just wondering if I should call in sick to work the next day. It's going to be great. I was going to say, we'll be going and going and going and falling apart more and more. So uh-huh. let's actually finish up about 1 o'clock, and then, I mean, good luck at that point because oh, yeah. it's, yeah. It'll be awesome. But also, <laughs> before we get out of here, don't don't forget five stars on them iTunes. It's That's super right. important. If we don't shoot for them stars, we'll never land on the moon, boys and girls. We'll never land on that crater filled moon. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, with that, Matt, don't forget to save. No, he, he, <laughs> I'm laughing too hard to do. Don't forget to save. <laughs> Shut up and sit down.